burned it all. Then, last week, we found out where it was all coming from. I had come by because we were planning to see a movie, but we never got to go. I pulled into his driveway at the same time as his girlfriend. We both got out of our cars and laughed at the coincidence of both of us getting there at the same time and walked into his house. His family was working, so we just walked into the house and down the stairs to his room. We hung out for a little while, Chris and his girlfriend sitting on his bed with me sitting at the desk. We were just chit-chatting and I was spinning the chair I was in when I happened to notice a tape leaning against the speaker to his computer. I picked up the tape and asked him what it was. He immediately got an oh shit look on his face. When his girlfriend got into the questioning, he finally broke down and admitted that it was the tape the old ladies had found in the house in the 80s. He said that when he talked to Shirley that time in front of her house and she told him they found the tape, she also gave the tape to him and he chose to leave that part out of the story four years ago. This is when we knew he had a problem. We asked him to stop listening to the tape. We asked him to stop this search for Butcher Face because it had never led to anything good. The next week, we decided to go to a cabin that Chris's girlfriend's family owns on a lake a couple towns over to finally finish this. We didn't know how right we were. We arrived at the cabin Monday afternoon. It was me, Chris, his girlfriend, and our friend Jesse. We filled Jesse in on the whole butcher face story on the drive down, and he immediately regretted coming along. Chris brought everything he had on butcher face, and soon after we got there, he asked if we could watch the last tape one final time. Jesse wanted to see what all the fuss was about, and I must admit I was curious to check it out myself. The cabin had no cable, phone line, cell phone signal, or internet access. The only form of entertainment was to watch movies, so they actually had a VCR still there with a decent VHS collection. We popped the tape into the VCR and turned it on. As mentioned before, this tape had nothing visual and was all audio. It began with clicking sounds like from an insect that would start off slow and go faster, then slow down and go fast again. It then changed to a quiet talking like a whisper. The voice talked about how he had an infectious evil and wanted to spread it to his disciples, and then it just faded out like he simply walked away from the camera. There were more noises of what sounded like animals walking around inside a building and a high screeching noise that lasted for a good five minutes. There was more talking where he called people zombies and cows and how only a few were worthy for the pit, followed by a jabbering sound like he was humming while wiggling his tongue around. That night, we lit a bonfire and Chris burned every note picture, schematic, and the last tape he had about Butcher Face. The next day we spent most of the morning watching movies, regular movies, and then we went out on a rowboat and explored the lake for a couple of hours. We got back and we hung out on the shore with some drinks. I must admit it reminded me of that time I walked into Chris's house and met his mother. She was in such a good mood after not having any problems with Butcher Face anymore. It felt almost exactly like that. At one point, Chris's girlfriend came out and asked if any of us knew where her iPod Touch was. She claimed that she left it in its docking bay, one of those ones with the speakers, which was also missing. She kept accusing us of hiding it from her. At this point, it was starting to get dark, and we began going back into the cabin one by one. I was the last one in, and I must admit I didn't close the door. Chris and his girlfriend and I were in their room looking for the iPod and its docking station when Jesse, who was still out in the living room, yelled, HOLY FUCK! We ran out into the living room and he said that he just saw a person run by the open door outside on all fours. Chris's girlfriend rushed to the door and slammed it shut and locked it. We stood still listening for where this person could have gone when all of a sudden we started hearing loud noises coming from the front deck. It was random noises like a voice chattering, something like the grinding of a buzzsaw, sobbing all in quick succession. 
We rushed to the door and peeked out the small window and saw Chris's girlfriend's iPod sitting on its docking bay, with a power cord going from it to a plug on the outside wall, sitting on the railing of the deck. These sounds were coming from the iPod. Chris opened the door, ran out and grabbed the iPod off the docking bay and ran back into the cabin. He gave it to his girlfriend and told her to delete the file that was playing, effectively erasing every known piece of media we knew of by Butcher Face. Chris and I then ran to the door, opened it and yelled that there was nothing left of any of his media we had. We destroyed every connection we had to him and he had no reason to follow us anymore. It stayed quiet for the rest of the night and we left that morning. During the drive home, we started thinking of some things. We now believe that Butcher Face wanted us to find those tapes. Maybe not us per se, but someone. The day that we found those first 24 tapes, we started an avalanche of more and more of his media and possibly assisted in its spreading to others. He had mentioned more than once in his media that he wanted to spread his infectious evil only to his disciples. And we think those disciples are those that have seen his media. We say this because he never seems to attempt to hide it, and he seems to keep watch of all those who have seen it. In the notes I saw of Chris's before he burned them, I saw that many of the sightings of him were scary but never seemed to be completely dangerous. It was like he was just keeping watch over those who had experienced his media. Ultimately, I decided to write this to warn you that if you ever come across anything that even resembles the footage, audio, art, writings, or carvings that are described in these stories, do not look at them. When we got back home, Chris decided to tell his family everything that had happened, including the tape he had hidden from everyone else and our hypothesis as to who Butcher Face is and what he's doing. Chris's brother Evan's face became pale, just as pale as the day he first saw the tapes. We asked him what the matter was and he said, You know how I said I never converted the tapes to DVDs? Well, I lied. Apparently, he actually did do the conversion at his college, after the day their house was broken into. The thing is that they disappeared and he later learned that fellow students had taken them thinking it was a cool school project, and made copies. From what we've heard, they've been handed down from person to person and copied, leading to countless duplicates. Sleepless tales have come to an end. Close your eyes, drift off, and don't look under the bed. The No Sleep Podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons license, 2011. Some rights reserved.